watching college basketball and the Mid-American Conference on ESPN. It's the hottest and the hungriest in the Mid-American Conference today in Muncie, Indiana. The Eastern Michigan Eagles and Ball State Cardinals, the home team, has dropped three of its last four, and with five games left to go in conference play, has fallen out of the bye picture. Top four seeds get a bye straight to Cleveland, but Eastern Michigan has won five of six after an 0-7 start, and it surges up those rankings, trying to get a home game on that first tournament Monday. With that, we welcome you courtside here at Johnny Worthen Arena. My partners, the point guard, David Ehot, Joel Godek, glad to have you along with us. We'll hear from Samantha Johnson on the sidelines in just a moment. All right, David, it's the second time these teams have met this year. We mentioned the 0-7 start for Eastern Michigan. In that game, in Ypsilanti, Eastern scored 14 points in the first half. Now it's 1-5 of 6. What changed? Well, a couple things, Joel. One is they're taking better care of the basketball, which is leading to better offense. They're second in the nation in steals, so they're getting a lot of transition baskets. And I think thirdly, the most important thing, they've involved the big fella. Bubakar Torre, reigning Mac West Player of the Week, is a dynamo on offense, and they're starting to feed him the basketball more. Well, you name-checked him. Let's dive in a little bit more. The only senior that plays, Bubakar Torre, shooting almost 80% in the last eight games. Yeah, he is a beast, Joel. Seven feet, 240 pounds. As you see in Mac play, averaging a double-double, 12 points, 10 rebounds, and that's why he's shooting such a high percentage. A lot of dunks, a lot of offensive rebounds, he is absolutely a beast inside. They are looking to him more and more. And oh, by the way, he also anchors that 2-3 zone defense. Torway is a load and definitely a player to watch here this afternoon. The 2-3 zone is the trademark for Eastern Michigan, the second best defense in the MAC. How do you break it apart? That falls on the freshman point guard, Jerron Boogie Coleman. Yeah, I tell you, talk about freshman of the year candidates. You got to put Jerron Coleman right up there. Second in scoring a freshman in the league. First in rebounding and assists. And you're seeing a little bit of everything from Coleman. Has the ability to step out, hit the three, post up smaller guards. You won't see that against the zone today, but what you do need to see is the eight assists that he had in Ypsilanti against the Eagles in the first game. That's gonna be an important area to watch today. We will talk much about Eastern Michigan's defense in the 2-3 zone as we go through the broadcast today, but we start talking about Ball State's defense, which is at times the best in the Mid-American Conference. Samantha Johnson has more on that. Hey, Joel, yeah, as you guys mentioned, first that Eastern Michigan signature zone defense has, as of this week, surpassed Ball State as the number one scoring defensive unit in the Mid-American Conference. In fact, they fell two of their opponents to less than 30% shooting, and it's two latest opponents to a combined 100 points. Now, yesterday at practice, Ball State assistant coach Jason Grunkmeyer admitted that, you know, their defense is hard to simulate just because of their size and uniqueness. He said it's always hard to navigate around them, always a challenge to shoot against them. Them, but he feels prepared because of the repetition that they've had in practice this week, Joel. Sam, thank you. Ball State has to figure out how to deal with the 2-3 zone today. That is the biggest challenge of playing Eastern Michigan, but also, David, Ball State's got to play the defense it's been used to. Yeah, they do, Joel. And let's take a look at the keys to the game today. First for Eastern, they have to turn defense into offense. They struggle in the half court, so get those transition points. Got to make their free throws. They struggle last in the Mid-American Conference shooting the free throws. For the Cardinals, offensively, you've got to move the basketball, take good shots, and defensively, you got to know where Torre is at all times. Eastern Michigan averages 65 points per game. Ball State 69. Bubakar Torre, they know where he is, David. The question is, can you stop it? Well, he got the ball, first of all, way too deep, but there you see the improved footwork. I mean, that's seven feet 240 with the nice spin move, and now you get your first look at the Eastern zone. Ishmael El Amin is Ball State's best shooter. Luke Bumbelow is a 30% three-point shooter. Tajay Teague is the man in the middle. And Jerron Coleman with the first turnover. Ball State averages 13 a game, has struggled in previous years. This is probably the best turnover season that James Whitford has had as a head coach. Thomas Benelli is a shooter out of Italy for Eastern Michigan. Ty Gross vastly improved from last year. He went from five points per game to 12 here as a junior. 
inside, Bubakar Torre, another deep catch and another easy turnaround with a right hand. You've seen him go to a little bit of a different repertoire here, though. First two possessions, pulling some tricks out of the back. Yeah, and I think the most important thing is the fact that they've looked to him in the first two possessions. How many times have you seen it in the past where he never got touches, making a conscientious effort to get the big fella involved, and why wouldn't? Torre guarding Tajay Teague with the step back, and that drops in for the Cardinals' best player, and he needs to become that again because, David, he has struggled of late. A season-low four shots in the last game these teams played. Yeah, not only that, four shots in the last game against Buffalo to go with six turnovers. They need Teague playing at a high, high level. Alley-oop from Montero, a little bit too high for Torre. The first miss, the big fella now two for three on the first three possessions. This is all about patience here, is it not? Well, the Cardinals, you've got to try to work the ball below the foul line. That's where you can do damage. There's simple things against the zone, shot fakes, ball fakes, dribble penetration, but you don't want to settle for early threes, and you've got to get, away, get some offensive rebounds. It's gone both ways under James Whitford for Ball State against Eastern Michigan. They've shot 46% and hit 18 threes against the zone. They've also shot under 30 in four of the last five games from three. Notice the Cardinals bring in some help. Shot clock at two, step out, and Torre, that is where you want him shooting. Absolutely. Here comes Ball State off of the miss, a chance to run. Coleman in rhythm three, and Ball State hits its first from deep and has itself a one-point lead. And I think the key you hit on there, Joel, was in transition. One of the ways to beat the zone, get down before it can get set up, and you can get some looks, particularly as much as Eastern turns it over. Eastern averaging 15 turnovers a game at the bottom of the conference. Good drive by Ty Gross. And it was an issue, the turnovers, when Eastern started 0-7. First two conference games, 19 and 22 giveaways. They turned it over 19 times in a three-point loss to Bowling Green, who right now is number two in the Mid-American Conference. Ball moving, Bumble with three, that drops down. That's a phenomenal sign for James Whitford because when this team hits them early, they hit them. If they don't, it usually is a pretty dry, barren day. And they've knocked in two, and what that's gonna do, Joel, is soften the zone up a little bit, which will create more space inside for guys like Teague. High low, broken up for Torre. And last touched by Jerron Coleman, it will stay with Eastern Michigan. And they got a break there. I mean, that was an errant pass, but man, this is the most that I've seen Eastern, particularly early on, really involved, involving Torre. Man shooting 77% in the last eight games, and he draws so much attention that Ty Gross is able to get open. Torre was in a double team, and it's 8-8. Eight, eight. Yeah, that's a tough matchup for Mallers. That's two baskets by Gross where he's taking Kyle off the dribble. Mallers, tough matchup on the other side, missing the corner three. Rebounded by Gross. Darren Spotsville is the starting point guard. He's been in and out of the lineup this year. Good handoff to Benelli, and the Italian misses. Offensive rebound. Spotsville, no look. Gross missed the dunk, and Torre traveled. It's the first turnover for Eastern Michigan. Tied at eight as David Eha breaks down the 2 3 zone when we come back.
This is what makes the Syracuse zone unique. It all starts with personnel. You've got to have length, size, and athleticism. My man Spencer isn't seven feet tall, so we've given him some blockers to illustrate that length. What you're looking at now is a standard 2-3 zone setup. Now, let's morph into what Eastern Michigan is going to show you. All right, my man Dylan guarding me at the ball will have another guard protecting the high post. At times, you will have four guys above the foul line. Now, they are going to dissuade that pass to the corner. If it happens to get down there and there's a dribble drive, they will trap you here. The center comes over, is stopping any drive. Remember, this is seven feet, six, eight, six, nine, a terrible place to be with the basketball. Last but not least, any pass to the high post in and around the paint area is going to be guarded one on one by the center while the other players fan out almost as if it's a man to man. This is the game within the game to watch today. E Bull State has handled it just well. Basketball will stay with the Cardinals 11 to shoot three of their first five and two of those are made threes. Yeah, Joe, and I think the key to watch is can the Cardinals get the ball inside or below the foul line, get that defense moving. They're trying to below the foul line with Hazen. There's the trap we talked about. And the teardrop for Jerron Coleman. That's nice, good awareness. If you pick up that dribble, you're stuck. And Coleman off to a good start. You know, Joel, one of the things you look back at why the Cardinals have had so much success against that zone, they've had a great big man passer in Trey Moses. He had 10 assists one game against Eastern because you can play that high low. It's a foul on Bracken Hazen. And Matt Kamenicki before that was very good against the Eastern zone inside. Jerron Coleman can give you that. Even as the point guard, he's six foot five, so still a bigger body that can handle physicality and pressure in the teeth of that zone. That's right, and if he catches it at the foul line, he's got Torre one on one, so that's going to be fun to watch. And speaking of fun to watch, Hazen battling Torre. Good spin move. Torre not able to finish. Hit the first two buckets of the game, but has been quiet since then, including a missed dunk. Excuse me, Joel, you got Hazen working that foul line. Bracken Hazen has had six assists in a game this year. Coleman got in deep and decided to kick it out, maybe too unselfish. That's turnover number two for Ball State. It's almost like you're surprised you got to the rim. Yeah, absolutely. He could have put it up there. That old adage, it's okay to leave your feet to make a pass, not to find one, and that's exactly what Jerron did right there. Gross, a deep three, missing front iron, rebound cleared by Coleman. Good to leave your feet to go grab a board as well. The Cardinals have struggled mightily in the rebounding battle the last three games, two of which have been losses. Here's El Amin back and forth on the wings, missing the three, rebounded by Mallers. Been that, on the glass today successfully, too. And that's one of the issues in the zone defense, trying to box out a man, not an area. You're susceptible to second chance opportunities. And Acre is, David, you want to tell me where he was? Yes, Joel, we've had our first <laughs> and hopefully the last proverbial foot on the sideline due to the new three point arc. Now, better that it happens at this juncture of the game as opposed to last night's Mac showdown. Buffalo and Kent State and Troy Simons last possession in overtime decided to step on the sidelines. Yes, that was a huge turnover. But speak about some action, Joel. How about that game last night? Phenomenal play. Double overtime. Buffalo wins on the road. Bulls have found themselves a hot streak. Eastern Michigan as well. Winners of five of six. Smallwood, great dump off, and that's easy money for Torre. Great job by Spotsville, getting to the paint, drawing the defense, and another dunk for Torre. It wasn't even a pass, it was a handoff. Josh Thompson has entered. He replaces Jerron Coleman at the point guard spot. Acre, a contested three. Boy, Chris James had a hand in his face. He is the smallest guy out there at six foot two for Eastern Michigan, so. Ball State able to take advantage of a little lack of length, which is a rarity. Yeah, big time shot there for A. Cree. And really that started with an internal pass to Hazen and then back out where you got the D in rotation. High low for the wrong team. Teague, the interception, up ahead, Bumbleo, full head of steam, he's fouled. Yakes and Montero with the reach in. Although 
they don't get him for the foul. They get Darren Spotsville, who was also back. That is his first, team's first. Cards with the turnover and then getting out and running. That's going to be something to watch when you've got the two best defensive teams in the league. Who can manufacture points outside of that half court D? Torre checks out. Jalen King checks in. He's six foot ten, but only 200 pounds. So you see a little bit of the advantage on the interior. Bumbleo makes both free throws, and Ball State has a five-point lead. Right now, Eastern with a 10-0 advantage, points in the paint, but that's not all that unusual, Joel. They only average four made threes a game in MAC play. Pass behind Noah Morgan. Out of bounds will stay with Eastern. It's the first time we've called Noah Morgan's name, though, a young man that averages 10 points per game. Transfer out of Fairleigh Dickinson. Tremendous shooter. Number five in green, he lurks at the bottom of your screen. Jalen King now in for Torre. He'll anchor the zone, not near the offensive presence that Torre is. It's Morgan inside, an air ball. King the rebound. David, you were saying, <laughs> as the shot clock expired, the bucket is in and a foul. Well, Joel, Jalen King has had one field goal in the last 12 games. He's matched that in his first minute of play. His uh, one field goal. His only one since December 30th, if you want to think about it from a time standpoint. Welcome to 2020, Young King. College basketball in the Mid-American Conference on ESPN is presented in part by Hazen Sons. We do restoration right. And by Mutual Bank. Go ahead, live a better life. Little timeout break recognition of some of the great teams all time here at Ball State University, including the 1990 Sweet 16 team. Sean Parrish is the man in the black pullover there, by the way, with the glasses. Some of the offspring of the men just recognized. Greg Miller was on the 90 team. His son was a great football player here. Chandler Thompson, his son Josh Thompson is on the Ball State team. But Sean Parrish's daughter, Sydney Parrish, one of the top 10 women's basketball recruits in the country will be Miss Indiana basketball going to Oregon. Going to be the next Sabrina Ionescu. Yes, outstanding player. Congrats to her and the Parrish family. Jalen King at the free throw line, and he hits, David. He came in 20% from the stripe. He was 5 for 24. So how about King with a bucket, the old-fashioned and one, and Eastern bringing a little bit of full-court pressure, trying to make the Cardinals milk clock in the half court. Inside to Bracken Hazen, looking for Teague down on the baseline, and the cut to El Amin is intercepted. You're going to watch Sabrina Ionescu, by the way, tomorrow night? Going for 2,000 points, 1,000 rebounds, 1,000 assists. She needs nine boards tomorrow. Pretty incredible stats. Best player not in women's college basketball, in college basketball. 
Abubakar Torre remains on the bench with Jalen King in there at center, 45 and green. Seven seconds to shoot. Morgan into a double team, nowhere to go. Gross, last second three, just grazed iron, and the Cardinals can now run. Trying to beat the zone, the sense of urgency for Bumbleo as soon as he caught that rebound. The way he whipped his head to go run. Hazen, good touch pass, kick out, Bumbleo a three, missed and around and out. David, is Ball State getting too unselfish? Second time it's passed up a look yeah, at the rim. Absolutely. I think if you're Josh, you're right there, point blank at the rim, particularly with Torre not in there. You got to go ahead and take that up. I mean, you like the unselfishness, but at some point you get it that close to the basket. Look, the two best shots in the game, right? Layups and threes. If you get the easier one of those two, you may as well take it. Again, six seconds on the shot clock. Eastern has stalled offensively with Torre on the bench. Spotsville at the shot clock horn. That, that was not good. Well, and you can see exactly why they're 24% from deep in Mac play. That's just not their game. Cardinals doing a good job shutting off the straight line drives. Torre, three of six. Rest of the team is three for nine for Eastern Michigan. Tajay T, good pass. Bracken Hazen. When Ball State's offense works, the basketball never touches the floor. And that all started with the excellent dime from Bumbleo to Teague. Now credit the awareness of Teague, but Bumbleo with a huge hockey assist thrown at cross court against the zone. Just the second bucket for Bracken Hazen in the last seven games. Morgan missing a three. Yeah, Torre's getting ready to check back in. Morgan intercepting the touchdown pass. That's five giveaways for the Cardinals. Eastern settling right now. Alley-oop for King, rising, and to the free throw line again. All right, so it stalled out Eastern Michigan a little bit with Torre on the bench. But Jalen King's trying to earn his keep. I'll tell you what, Jalen King has come to play. He's got a career high of 10. He's already got five. Chance to make it six on two three-point plays. And that's their game. Spotsville getting to the paint, feeding the big guy, not settling for early threes. Jalen King averages one point per game. He's an incredible blue chip stock at the moment. In and out. So Bubakar Torre is back in. He and Jalen King are playing. Torre actually just threw King out on the wing because Jalen King set up to play the five man in the zone. Shot clock is at six. Eastern Michigan's bench is into it. Four seconds. El Amin, the teardrop. That's too strong, and Torre has the rebound. He's averaging 14 points and 11 rebounds over the last eight games, a span in which he is shooting 80%. For as many shots as he takes, that's ridiculous. And he doesn't touch the ball in the possession, but Spotsville able to get in deep. First bucket for Darren Spotsville, who averages three points per game. Eastern is this odd collection of Torre, Ty Gross, and, and like the misfits. I don't mean that pejoratively, but it's a different guy that averages two points per game who will score 10 on any given night. Kyle Mallers has his first three for Ball State. And that is textbook execution. What did you do? You got the ball to the foul line and Boogie Coleman, and he was able to find Mallers open in the corner. Good ball movement by the cards. Lead remains three for Ball State, or is back up to three. James, step back over Bumbleo. Chris James has got himself some game, the freshman out of Long Beach, California. At a program that is so often built on transfers and junior college transfers, Rob Murphy really combs those ranks. Has a chance to build Chris James as a four-year player. Bumbleo, good drive and kick. Great dribble penetration. Teague fell down, out to Coleman, and a brick off left. Whistle on the rebound, Mallers and King were the two that were tied up there. With 7.15 to go in the first, Ball State's lead is one. Kyle Mallers the foul. The entry, the feed, and Mallers delivers.
Wilkinson attendance here at Berlin Arena today, brought to you by First Merchants Bank. Welcome to men's basketball alumni and their families. All of our Muncie residents here today for Muncie Out Day, YMCA members and families, kids club members and their families. We have new opportunity center guests here today. It's a one-point lead for Ball State over Eastern Michigan here in Muncie. It is Mental Health Awareness Week across the Mid-American Conference. All of the student-athlete academic advisory committees have done a phenomenal job promoting mental health awareness. And Ty Gross, David, is an incredible story for Eastern Michigan. He's from Ypsilanti, went to Northeastern originally out of high school and transferred home because of severe and major depression and bipolar disorder joined the Eastern basketball team. He quit in 2016, was hospitalized because of depression and anxiety twice in a month. And Rob Murphy and he maintained a great relationship. They stuck together. He wound up rejoining the team, is doing the best he ever has right now, personally, and on top of that, as a basketball player. Yeah, absolutely a great story to see. Bubakar Torre taking his thunder, though. The man gets up, and he has been everything for Eastern's offense. He has eight points. Yeah, and I tell you, I think six of the eight are on dunks, but Joel, Cardinals have, I can't remember the last time they put on full court pressure in the first half of a game, and last time Eastern beat it and got the easy basket. John Coleman throws that out of bounds off of James. This is uh, Hops. 7 feet. Kyle Mallers up. Nope. Simple as that. Eastern's lead is a point now. I tell you though, the schools in the Mid-American Conference have done a phenomenal job this week when it comes to that mental health awareness. A lot of teams have worn green ribbons through competition on the women's side. El Amin's three missing. Thomas Benelli pulls down the board. They did a great video here in Ball State where eight of the student athletes talked about their own battles with mental health. Incredibly moving video. If you haven't seen it, go to BallStateSports.com and check it out. But uh, Gross, just terrific story all the way around. Happy to see it for him. Driving Spotsville with the right hand. High kiss. I tell you, Spotsville has been a difference maker, Joel. Ball State has got to keep him out of the lane. He's got three assists now to go with those four points. He is definitely controlling things. Ball State just one of its last five from three. Started three for six. There's Morgan jumping the passing lane, and the right-handed layup is good. That's six Ball State turnovers against a team that ranks number two in the country in steals. And that is the length. It's a reach-in on Spotsville. I mean, Mallers tried to throw cross-court. Joe, it's just, it looks like it's open. It's just not. They get so many deflections. Watch the anticipation. The run out and points off turnovers in transition. That's how Eastern is going to win this game. Number two nationally in steals. About a steal and a half better than Central Michigan, who's second in the Mid-American Conference per game. Tron Coleman, good two-man game. And Ball State is down by three. That little pocket there, Joel, between the elbow and the short corner is where the Cardinals want to go to work. That time they got it to Hazen. Great feed. Now, how can Ball State clamp down its defense? Eastern Michigan is shooting 55%. And when Ball State has struggled of late, it's on the defensive side. And look, they're just make them shoot threes. You can keep them out of the paint. Guys like Spotsville, but... Eastern is not going to win this game launching threes. 0 for 6 from behind the arc. Eastern on the season shoots 28% from three. Bottom of the Mid-American Conference. Now over the last six games, when it's one, it's, There's the the number one, it's the number one field goal shooting team from two in the match. Excuse me, Joel. That area, and right now Hazen is roaming. That's kind of the soft spot in that zone. And if you can get the ball in that area, then you can really go to work. And speaking of going to work, Tajay Teague needs to get something going here. Just one field goal attempt, two points to go with three rebounds. And it was a fadeaway early on here in the first half. Inbounds is stolen away by Bubakar Torre. Again, the length, another deflection in the steal. Torre has eight points. They use him in the pick and roll. He missed the dunk for the second time. 
Back to Torre. One on one with Teague. Got it back, and Torre is fouled. The man is on a mission. I would not want to meet him in an octagon, a wrestling ring, the post. He just headbutted the bucket stanchion. And he was really frustrated this second attempt here, really upset with himself that he missed that one. And now he's got to convert Torrey from the free throw line, 44% on the season. There is a sweat mark where Torre headbutted the thing. He has nine points. Halfway up that red padding. <laughs> Great camera work. And I think if you're Rob Murphy, the other thing that's important, no fouls for Torre. Joel, he's fouled out the last three times he's played card the Cardinals. Well, he's fouled out a lot. Makes the second in just 24 minutes, Eastern's last game. That was a win against Kent State. Eastern Michigan's lead is three. Ball State needs to get it going again on offense. Started three of five from three, and that's an offensive foul. Ball State is one of its last six against the zone from behind the arc. Yeah, it was Tajay Teague, a little bit of frustration. His first. That's six fouls on Ball State, only two on Eastern. Although the zone can hide fouls at times. This is a 10-2 run for Eastern Michigan and a reach in by Teague and he's fouled. Yakes and Montero with a little ankle grab inadvertently. And it gets us to the under four timeout. It does halt Ball State's leak out, trailing by its largest margin of the game. Welcome back inside Worthen Arena. Tajay T coming to the line. One of four MAC players averaging a double double in conference play. The second player, Eastern's Bubar Torre. Uh, but when we talked to Coach Jason Grunkmeyer yesterday at practice, he told what makes Tajay T such an excellent student athlete is his work off the court as well. He said basically he's a bottom line guy. He knows at the end of the day what he needs to do to support his teammates, get everything done academically, and take care of business off the court. So, Samantha, thank you. Certainly a guy that'll be in the running for Mid-American Conference Player of the Year. A lot's gonna have to happen here down the stretch. Ball State right now in the fifth place position in the league, and Akron being the leading team, Lauren Christian Jackson is in the driver's seat, but Teague is a unique player. There's no one quite like what he can do in the Mid-American Conference. We've gotta see it here in the next 23 and 30 seconds. Bracken Hazen, Trout. How's Teague been taken away? He's got one shot. Yeah, I mean, look, they're trying to get him in that little pocket between the elbow. The Cardinals are not doing a good job getting high low. That's where you've seen it against this Eastern zone. 
That time Hayes and Cotta went one on one with Torre, got the turnover. But what you want to do is get the ball in and around the foul line and then have Teague post up down low. Ishmael El Amin guarding Noah Morgan, missing. Hazen is pushed from behind. And that's on Bubakar Torre. So a foul on Eastern Michigan's big man. That is his first, with 3.15 left to go in the first. And he did it right in front of Scott Seville. Makes it an easy call. Bubakar Torre out of Dakar, Senegal, started his career at Grand Canyon University before transferring from the Arizona school up to Eastern Michigan. You can see Teague trying to seal. And another Ball State turnover. That's the 10th of the first half for the Cardinals. There's still three minutes left to go. Ball State averages 13 a game total. High low lob, Torre, the catch, gathers himself. Torre with the length, almost was able to just reach up and put that ball in from an odd angle. Josh Thompson playing without the trademark headband. Ball State's point guard, three and gray. Gets himself set up at the free throw line. And El Amin just coughs it up. Way too many empty possessions, 11 turnovers. That's the story right now. Cards have done a better job this last five minutes eliminating the dribble drives, but not even getting shots up, Joel. David, it's a, there's an oomph that's missing from Ball State over the last now five games. It's lost three of the previous four because of that. Out physical, out rebounded, the defense hasn't been there, and Bubakar Torre waited too long. That's a shot clock violation. Ball State, and they're gonna go look at this. Ball State just has to, gotta find something within itself, an energy that was there early in the season. It was, and I think a lot of it stems from better defense. Let's take a look at this on the replay. Does he get it off in time? Boy, that is close. Yep, he does. One second, one second, one second, balls out. Yeah, and that's something, I tell you, a new part of his game. I mean, Torre facing up, usually was back to his basket, turning over that left shoulder, the little jump hook. That was a nice little face up. And Hazen did what he could at seven foot 240 to push him off the block. So credit the big fella. You know, it's funny, as good as he is on offense right now, he's recruited to Eastern Michigan to anchor the zone, to play defense. And Rob Murphy said, Bubba Cartore is better on offense than we thought. Like, this is an added bonus. When he got to Ypsilanti, it was found money. And now, it's not just found money. It was like a you know, found Ben Franklin's. Yeah, and I mean, what's that adage? If you're shooting 69%, you're not shooting enough. He's got 11 field goal attempts already here in the first half. Why not 70? 68. What do you mean? Well, like, you know, it just seems like a random percentage to have chosen. That's what he's shooting. Well, oh, okay. So the well, that's the adage. It just happened to line up. Then. Oh yeah, I, <laughs> I took some liberties with you know. If you're shooting 60 percent, you're still not shooting enough. But there you see, Mac West Player of the Week, averaging a double double in Mac play and just really, really come on. Of course, from Senegal, started his career at Grand Canyon University. They did a video on him at GCU. And basket that basket does indeed count. His dream golf foursome, which is cool that they, you know, that's a tall golfer. Um, you want to take a random guess at the other three that Bubakar Toure wants to play golf with? I would say maybe Hakeem Olajuwon one. That is correct. How about that? <laughs> uh, Dikembe Mutombo? No. Oh, okay. Beyonce and Nicki Minaj are oh, the other two. Okay. I would have never. <laughs> <laughs> Trick question. Tajay Teague, travel. David, the turnovers are mounting in a serious way. Yeah, that is now 12 to just three for Eastern, a team that turns it over 15 times a game. And right now, Joel, Eastern with 24 of their 29 points in the paint. Seven-point lead, Tajay Teague, three-quarter fronting Torre. 
I mean, if you're plus 20 in the paint, 24 to four in the first half, you're gonna win some ball games. Morgan inside, good finish. And it's now 26 points in the paint. And the first field goal for the transfer from Fairleigh Dickinson. Yeah, and a straight line drive. And here's the other thing, Joel. It's hard to run and beat the zone down when you're taking the basketball out of the net after a made basket. Ball State hasn't scored in four minutes and 20 seconds, and that drought continues with the lead up to a game high nine. There's that one on one when you catch it at the high post. Credit Torre. Another block shot. Morgan checking back behind him to Rob Murphy, ball, or, uh, Eastern Michigan's head coach, with the shot clock at 10. Torre's been great in the pick and roll. Hook it past him to Ty Gross. Six to shoot into the lane, and Ty Gross fancifully now has six points, and Eastern Michigan is all over this first half. Team that's won five of six in the Mid-American Conference. The loss was by a point to right now seemingly unbeatable Akron. Team in green is legit. Look at that back line right now, 6'10", 7 foot, and 6'9". And Ball State trying to pass through it. Thing hits the wickets. You know, they've tried a couple different combinations at offense. We've seen Coleman in there at the foul line, Hazen, Teague trying to get him in there now, get him going, and it's just not happening. Shot clock is off. 15 seconds to go in the half. That doesn't matter. Ball State wants a shot, any shot, whenever. It's Coleman in the three. Missed it. Rebound, Gross. Maller's chasing. Seven seconds. El Amin off the offensive rebound. It's tipped. Saved by Benelli. Two seconds. Bumbleo rise and fire. And he missed off right. It's a 16-2 run for Eastern Michigan to end the half. Ball State does not score for the final 5-23. You got to credit Eastern's defense, 12 turnovers, and they're getting it done in the paint.
the Indiana Pacers power pack dunk team entertaining here at the half in Muncie. Bubakar Torre, I think, should join this team. <laughs> the Eastern Michigan Center has been absolutely downright dominant in the first half. David Iha, Joel Godet, glad to have you back with us courtside. The only thing about that dunk team, one guy is named T-Rex, and there's another guy named Sheep. <laughs> I don't think it, it ends well for Sheep. And we've got two thin, so you got a little bit of everything out there. <laughs> uh, Bubakar Torre in the first half. Tell what do you, you think? Everything is advertised. We talked about him, players to watch, keys to the game. They got him the ball early and often, and he was a beast in there. Cardinals could not stop him. 12 points, simply dominant at both ends, Joel, getting it done on defense as well as offense. You know, Eastern went through that little spell where they started jacking threes once they got back to business as usual. Total domination in that first half. Ball State hasn't scored in five minutes and 23 seconds. It's a reversal of the first time these teams met. And remember, Eastern Michigan didn't score for the final 10 minutes of the first half. What happened to Ball State on offense? How's it changing? Well, a couple things. One, 12 turnovers. Way too many empty possessions. Eastern got nine more field goal attempts in the quarter. Ishmael Al-Amin, 0 of 4 from deep. Tajay Teague hardly got involved. Cardinals have to do a better job offensively, but I think it has to start on defense. When you're not playing good defense, it carries over. If you've got the mojo going defensively, you're feeling better about yourself, all of a sudden that leads to better work at the offensive end. No doubt about it. Eastern, they came to play here in that first half. Cardinals got out-hustled, out-manned, and need to pull it together here for the next 20 minutes. Ball State's three of its last four games, losses. Those are three of their worst five defensive games in Mid-American Conference play this year. Eastern Michigan in that first half shot 50%. It's an 11-point lead for Eastern Michigan at the break. There are only five games remaining in the Mid-American Conference season. Before it is tournament time in Cleveland, Eastern has two of its next four at home. Northern Illinois and Central Michigan before ending on the road. Ball State on the flip side also has the tour to Michigan. Western at home, Central at home, at Northern Illinois coming up 
Their senior night is that March 3rd game against Central Michigan. This is the only game going on in the MAC right now. Everything else is later today. On the women's side, it's a Ball State Eastern matchup today as well. It's a one-point game. Eastern leads there with 20 seconds left. I'll give you the first half highlights of this one when we return. from Bracken Hazen in the last seven games. And that led to 14 points off turnovers. And you're helping a team not very efficient on the offensive end get efficient by the run out. There was Noah Morgan with the steal and the finish. And of course, getting the big fellas involved. Good minutes off the bench for King. Ty Gross, three baskets going to the hole. But the big fella, Joel, Bubakar Tare. Give him 12 points, four rebounds. And even though they were 0 of 6 behind the arc, shot 50% in the first half. But the big thing here, the 12 turnovers, and look at the di differential points in the paint. Points in the paint is okay if you're making threes. The only problem is Ball State hasn't tonight. It's four of 13 from behind the arc. And the second half is coming your way next.
second half action on ESPN from inside Worthen Arena. In the first half, it was turnovers and foul trouble that affected Ball State's game. And at halftime, we caught up with assistant coach Matt Crenshaw, who told us our guys have got to bring the energy and have to make decisions. He said they are being too tentative, and that's why we've had so many tur turnovers so far. And then in terms of stopping Torre, he really said it starts before the pass, pushing him off the block and then relying on the guys around you. So, Joel, confidence and control, the message from the Ball State locker room. Samantha, thank you. James Whitford calls them real estate catches. If you allow Bubakar Torre to catch it on the block, it's a house on the beach. It's a million dollars. If you allow him to catch it four blocks in, a couple hundred thousand. Yes, and it, you almost need a crane to move seven feet 240. <laughs> so good luck with that. Here's the other thing, Joel. Just two points combined between El Amin and Teague. Cardinals have to get their big guns going here. The two leading scorers for Ball State, and Teague doing it off a game where he took a season low four shots in the loss at Buffalo. Teague, first touch underneath, turn around, and over the shot blocking Torre. There was an aggression that we didn't see in the first half there. And that is the first time all afternoon you've seen the high low, Joel. You got it to Coleman, and able to get Teague on the post out. Eastern Michigan shot 50% in the first half. It's been one of the keys to its recent run. Eastern winning five of its last six games. Number one offense in the Mid-American Conference from two points over that run. Benelli, a three, and that drains down. So add that into the bag of tricks. The Italian at six foot ten with the step out game. Benelli definitely has a shooter's mentality, Joel. I mean, he will launch it anytime he catches it. And Mallers is fouled in the corner. Benelli took 10 threes in the first meeting between these teams. Look, six foot ten. How do you block that? Great form. And when he hits one, he starts to get the feeling. So look for him to he only had one field goal attempt in the first half. Key to Ball State's offense, the key to beating any zone. Got to get the ball moving. Deep three, El Amin. Or you can just take threes from Kokomo. Now he was warming up from there before the game, so why not? Exactly, Joel, from that exact same spot. He was the first player out here. 0 for 4 from deep in the first half, but got that one, and maybe that's what he needed to get him going. Pinelli with the high-low lob to the wrong team. Torre was late getting there. Bumbleo, full head of steam. El Amin, rhythm three in transit. Around, out, tip back. Teague just couldn't get there in time. And Torre has the Eastern Michigan rebound. But that was good energy by Teague. Seeing his mojo going a little bit here in the second half. And man, that ball was in and out. Coleman has the defense on Spotsville. Trying to get aggressive with the Eastern Michigan point guard. Got into the paint far too easily in the first half. Four seconds to shoot. Torre out to Yakes and Montero. One to shoot. He doesn't get it off, but he does turn it over to Ball State. Fifth giveaway for Eastern Michigan. There's a concerted effort. You can see the way Bumbleo came down the court. Ball State's clearly trying to beat the zone and not get stuck in this just molasses of trying to move the defense. That's right, just trying to play with more energy, Joel. Just very dead in the first half. Teague puts Torre on a yo-yo. That's the same way he hit his first bucket of the ball game, and he can do that because pull Torre away from the beach, get him out of the real estate. Absolutely, we talked about it in the sequence. It's the center's responsibility, and now what does Torre do? Is he gonna try to guard Teague out there? Benelli, a three. You've gotta guard him out there. His second of the first half, and a little shoulder shrug. He'll take it. Well, he said he's not shy about putting it up, particularly after he sees one go through the net. Expect more of that from Benelli. 43 now of his 49 makes this year are threes. Coleman, a step back one. All right. Degree of difficulty up a notch. Ball State has cut this down to a seven-point game. Tell you, Coleman just continues to mature and play really good basketball. Freshman of the year in the MAC? No question about it. Leads the MAC in freshman rebounding and assists. Double figure points in the last nine games now for Coleman. Good pass by Torre, finds a cutting Montero. What does Bubakar Torre not do, David? 
He defends, he dunks, he dishes. Yeah, I tell you, he's doing it all. And when you're seven feet and can see over everybody, easy to find the cutters. Watch that shot clock as Ball State bides its time, prodding this 2-3 zone. Eight to shoot. Coleman back out and into the backcourt. El Amin's got to track this down or let it go out of bounds. Unless that would turn into an easy layup for Eastern Michigan. Then it takes us to our first media timeout here in the second half. The gap is closed a little, but Eastern Michigan's still in control on the road. Eastern Michigan is staked to a nine-point lead here early in the second half. David Eha, it's been a complete tale of two seasons for the Eagles. 0-7, worst start in conference play for Eastern Michigan since it was 0-9 in 2006. But the hottest team and an absolute danger over the last now seven games, 5-1 and one and leading today. Yeah, really, it's amazing how that happens, right? Your offense gets better, your defense gets stingier, and all of a sudden the wins come. And look, they were in a ton, Joe, of close games early on in the season, in the max season, that they were losing. Not a very good free throw shooting team, but they've got confidence now as well at the end of games. Ball State goes to a full court press, and Bumbleo knocks that out of bounds off of Chris James. Cardinals have gone to the press a couple of times this year, used it in their last home game to erase a 20-point deficit against Bowling Green. Got within two points in four minutes. Here's Torre. On Teague, using the shoulder, gets to the rim and scores. You know, there have been a lot of really good big men since Rob Murphy's been at Eastern Michigan, Deshante Riley and James Thompson. I think Bubba Torre is the best of them. Yeah, but here's the thing I love is the Eagles are going to Torre. Think about this, Joel. Last year, Paul Jackson on that team averaged 13 field goal attempts to eight for Thompson. There were times where he was basically invisible. They weren't even looking in there. This Eastern team is being disciplined right now, and why wouldn't you try to go at the big fella? Pinelli, his third three, missed it here in the second half. And the rebound down to Tajay Teague on the break. He's got Bumble wide open, in rhythm, and down swishing. You get the stop. You can get out and run earlier and easier looks in transition. That has to be the key, but it all starts if you can get stops or turnovers on the defensive end. Eastern Michigan leads by eight, shooting into the ball stay in student section and band. Let me tell you, Benelli missed that last one. He will continue to launch if he catches it and feels like he's got any room. That's a whistle and a block on Jerron Coleman. Benelli is not a passer, David, when he, when he starts to feel his rhythm. 
He has eight assists, Joel, in 445 minutes. He learned the Italian. Passaggio. Pass the ball. What is Italian for? I'm open, because that's his philosophy. Listen, if it works, 43 of his 49 makes this year are threes. Seven seconds to shoot. Spotsville trapped. Tajay Teague reaching in. Four to shoot. Spotsville got free. Six points for Darren Spotsville, and the Eastern lead is 10. I tell you, Spotsville getting to the paint, having success. Teague over Torre, clearly an altered shot. Benelli the rebound, Passaggio, and Spotsville able to walk it into the front court. Well, that's the right word there, Joel. Altered shot, won't go down as a block, but clearly the, the presence of the seven footer making a difference inside. And now you see a lot of the, just the dribble handoff, burn some clock, Eastern in no hurry. Morgan, blocked by Teague, second in the MAC in block shots. But Mallers handed it off for no one. Very nearly just gave the basketball away. Ball State with just one turnover in the second half. That had 12 in the first. Good pass, Teague. Coleman fouled. Jerron Coleman with a chance for an and one. Foul on Eastern Michigan is the first against Noah Morgan. His first the now yeah, good entry. There's that spot between the elbow and the short corner. Great cut and feed by Teague. Coleman with that 6-5 frame. He gets a lot of traditional and ones. Knocks it down. Occasionally the non-traditional and one. And I tell you, he's going to get a rest here. Don't expect Coleman to sit out very long. You got the 12-minute media timeout. But right now, crowd just begging to get in this thing, and it would start with stops and rebounds. Seven-point game. Torre, high-low. Josh Thompson, the little guy, the point guard broke it up. Bumbleo driving in transition to the rim. Can't get the drop. Torre and Teague now. Tajay Teague poked it away. Guards doing a good job doubling down. That's how they created the turnovers in the first matchup between these two. Haven't been able to do it thus far until that last possession where Thompson snuck in there. Eight to shoot. Torre is six of 12 in the game. He has the pick and roll. Open on the block with two to shoot. James blocked. Cardinals have it. No numbers. Thompson. Juking, jiving, waiting. And Ball State will now work the zone back and forth. El Amin, another deep one. Missed off left and out of bounds. It's this 2-3 zone that Rob Murphy has brought with him from Syracuse. It's been the hallmark in Ypsilanti. And right now, it's got Eastern Michigan staked to a seven-point lead on the road.
Now, I am not an expert in body language. I believe she said yes. I'm glad you clarified that for we just come back and show a couple kissing <laughs> under the stanchion. You may want to elaborate that we did have a proposal there. So very exciting and great works, to get the crowd. It works like mistletoe. And she truly looked surprised. What a great moment. Anytime you're under the hoop, David, it's, it's like the holiday net. Eastern Michigan with the basketball here, leading by seven in Muncie. Eastern has won five of its last six games. The hottest team in the Mid-American Conference against a struggling Ball State squad, desperate for a win, having dropped three of four. And out of the bye picture right now in the Mid-American Conference. Five seconds to shoot, Spotsville dribbling the heck out of the thing. Two to shoot, Spotsville missing, Torre. Offensive rebound, his sixth board of the game. And I was just going to commend Hazen in that possession because they tried to get it into Torway. He did a great job of rooting him off the block. Just couldn't secure the rebound. Torre and Hazen again going to war. Tajay Teague is not guarding the big fella, albeit being on the floor in Spotsville with an absolute crushing bucket. David Eastern Michigan is intentionally running the shot clock down to one, two, three seconds and scoring. And that is now 34 points in the paint. And how good has Spotsville been at the end of shot clock? Great. It's 36 to eight points in the paint now after that last make. Torre has taken it away. So is the zone. Bumbleo content to shoot over top. And another rebound for Bubakar Torre at seven. And route to his 11th double-double of the year. Comes a little dribble weave. They're just going to milk this thing and try to shorten this game, particularly with a nine-point lead. And why wouldn't you put it in the hands of Spotsville or Torre? Seven seconds to shoot. Montero at the rim. Easy finish. All right, David, a couple things. Number one, how do you put some pressure on Eastern to speed them up so they don't just drain this thing? And then number two, how does Ball State play better defense? Because that was ridiculously easy. It was so easy. You've got to pressure the passer. you just got to play with more energy. And, Joel, I would, it's, to me, I would start full court pressing after made baskets. Well, there's an opportunity. Ishmael El Amin, a three, and a timeout for James Whitford. The Cardinals are back within eight and in need of energy. Eastern Michigan on the road trying to take one and pick up its sixth win in seven tries. Good pick by Hazen. El Amin made him pay.
It's an eight point Eastern Michigan lead here inside Worthen Arena. And we know with these two teams, it could come down to the final moments. For Eastern Michigan, nine of their 12 conference games so far this year have come down to six or fewer points. And for Ball State, six of their 13. And this is something that also rings true across the Mid-American Conference. Joel and David, more than half of the max 72 conference games so far this year have been decided by six or fewer points. So guys, don't go anywhere. Sam, thank you. David, why is that? Because the league, the parity amongst the league, Joe, is as tight as it's ever been. You don't have dominant teams, and so that's going to lead you to a lot of close games. Well, and historically, it's like that in a regard. There's not a gaping hole in funding, support, facilities from 1 to 12 in the Mid-American Conference, and because of that, it's a level playing field. Roll the ball out, let's play. There's a travel on Eastern Michigan. That's giveaway number seven for the Eagles. Half of their season average on a night where the Cardinals have already surpassed their season average for turnovers. The lead for Eastern is still eight. Really the first mistake all night by Spotsville. See if Ball State doesn't take advantage right now and points off turnovers, trailing 16 to six. There's another turnover though. That's the 14th chance for Eastern Michigan. You know, Sam was talking about close losses. The last few losses for Eastern Michigan, David, the margins, one, five, three, two, three, three. That's a bunch of one possession games. And in a winding way, you can get five points in one possession. And Joel, they've won five of their last six. And the, the loss at Akron, they missed six free throws in the last minute, or that would have been six in a row. And a huge win over the, right now, team that will be the MAC champion. There's a turnover by the Eagles. I was going to say, all those close games will make Rob Murphy lose his hair, but. <laughs> He's one of the good coaches, one of the good guys in the Mid-American Conference. We had a great conversation with him before the game. Came out with a book in the offseason. Deep, the life story of Rob Murphy. Dump off for Tajay Teague. Threw a double team, is fouled. And I know you're going to get the audio book when she said he's going to record himself at some point once the season is done. Look, it's an it's absolute fascinating story. There you see the great dribble penetration. Got to do more of that if your ball state can't settle for just passing around the perimeter. But just an incredible story about the life of Rob Murphy. Only met his father twice. His mother, he grew up in the inner city of Detroit. His mother was involved in the drug trade, murdered at the age of 29 when Rob was 13 years old, had no parents, had to live with his grandparents, and was a phenomenal athlete. His high school coach said, go to school, I want you to go to college, be a teacher, come back, and that's what he did. He went to, originally signed for Eastern to play, to play football, football, didn't have the grades, went to Central State, played basketball, came back, coached, in the inner city of Detroit, won a state championship. And Joel, do you know who one of the high school players he coached? Antonio Gates. Went on to do pretty well at Kent State. There's a block called on Eastern Michigan, where Rob Murphy began his coaching career at the collegiate level, then was an apprentice to Jim Beheim and has done great here with the Eagles, who lead by seven on the road in Muncie today.
Bubakar Torre has been absolutely dominant, and the points in the paint battle, David, ridiculous in favor of Eastern Michigan. 38 to 8. And Bubakar Torre, 14 points, seven rebounds. He's done it all dunks, face ups, getting out in transition with the alley oops. And oh, by the way, Joel, he's played a team high 27 minutes. Ball State assistant Jason Grunkemeyer called him Mr. Incredible. When we talked to him while the teams were warming up, I've never seen The Incredibles. Shame on me. It's apparently a 97% film on Rotten Tomatoes. But Mr. Incredible is like the super strong dad, like you can't move the man. You said it earlier, you need a crane to get Bubakar Torre out of the lane. Yeah, we've got to get you the Disney Channel. <laughs> Disney Plus. If you haven't seen that. You got to get hit with the kids. All right, with that made free throw, it's now a two possession game. The Cardinals get stops and then get out in transition, but clearly Teague trying to get more involved right now. Can yep. you match Torre? It's the man at the free throw line, Tajay Teague, that Ball State needs something from. He's their best player. He's one of the best players in the Mid-American Conference, 25 and gray, defending Torre. It's one-on-one -on -one with these two. Out of bounds, off of Torre, and Eastern Michigan with only its eighth turnover opens the door here for Ball State. That all started with the catch away from the block. When Torre's got to put it on the ground, a different story than when he can catch it deep and just shoot it. Great job, Teague. Now, how early in this possession? There it is. Tajay Teague to Jerron Cole. Man, he tricked the layup, but back to Teague. And Ball State has a chance to reset. Bumbalo, give him three. <laughs> All's well that ends well. Second chance opportunities. Coleman missed the bunny. The fortuitous bounce, and Bumbalo makes Eastern Michigan pay for giving up the O board. Eight nothing ball stayed run. Noah Morgan ripped through against El Amin. Teague is there to help. Three point game. Bumbalo wants it. Bumbalo for the tie. Look, Bumbalo's filling in Lancey. Timeout, Eastern Michigan. It's an 11-0 run for the Ball State Cardinals, who had lacked energy, gusto, oomph, for about the first three quarters of this game. Well, they got it back, and it's the freshman backcourt. Coleman, the dimes, Bumbalo taking care of business from deep. Luke Bumbalo has been hot and cold here, David. Breaking a one of 10 string with now his fourth made three. And what a huge find. Didn't get his feet on the sideline. He was set, but Coleman drew the defense on time, on target. It's no better place to make a big three than right in front of your own bench. And credit the fan on the baseline in the blue pullover, by the way. I don't know if anybody caught that at home. Phenomenal windmill celebration. <laughs> Ball State six of nine from three in the second half. Now, there's still six and a half minutes left in the game. And it's only tied. A lot of basketball still to be written. But Bumbalo having another breakout performance. The question becomes is can he string these together? He was five of eight from three against Western Michigan, then had the one for 10 spell before coming in hot today. Crowd into it, Cardinals a little bit more juice. You've only got one team foul if you're Ball State. You have the ability to be aggressive. Torre triple teamed. Morgan's left alone. El Amin, the late closeout was enough. Tajay Teague, the rebound. There's a reason Ball State is nine and two. 
excuse me, one loss in conference at home. Great catch. Oh, travel by Coleman. He didn't think so. Scott Seville said he shuffled his feet. That's the 15th turnover. Boy, I thought that was a fantastic catch, but without a ton of three-point shooters out there right now, Benelli on the bench, you can provide help if it goes into Torre and dig down. Teague on Torre. Coleman lurking. Mallers as well. Torre strong, and Torre to the free throw line. Bubakar Torre is a grown man. Tajay T wanted to travel. I thought that was good footwork. He has just improved so much. Could not get that basket out of Bubakar Torre last year. And now the free throws. The Achilles heel for Eastern Michigan, just 62% on the season. And an air ball from Torre. David, you alluded to the Akron loss earlier. Number one team in the league, Eastern Michigan, lost by one at the jar in Akron. Was 18 for 38 at the free throw line that game. Yeah, and like we said, missed six in the last minute that could have sealed it. And that's why I say go ahead and be aggressive. Much better to make them earn it. Alley-oop. John Coleman, bring him to your feet. Tied again at 51 and got dangerously close to a technical. Hang on the rim a little extra when you're into it. Ty Gross in deep. Mallers, tremendous defense, but he did it with fouling. I don't know, David. Well, look, Jabir Walker with the call. Here's the thing. There was a referee right under the basket by that play. So that's what Coach Whitford is probably upset about, saying, look, the guy right there didn't call it. I mean, that to me. That's good defense. It's a bailout play there. Gross had nowhere to go. Yeah, that's a bad call. Ty Gross at the free throw line is a 72% shooter. Eagles now three of six, Joel. Four of seven at the free throw line. Ty Gross has seven points, the junior out of Ypsilanti. Back to the Coleman alley-oop. First time we've seen that all season long. Usually he's the one throwing it. Where he pass. Back to Coleman and finishes. He wanted a foul. Give him the bucket anyway. Ball State leads for the first time since there were seven minutes and 15 seconds to go in the first half. Four and a half minutes to play in the game. Torre traveled. Why is it hard to play on the road? Because it's loud. And it is getting chippy right now between Teague and Torre. They are talking smack and going at one another. And what do we talk about, Joel, earlier? If you're making baskets, how that propels your defense and gives you energy, you've definitely seen that in the last 10 minutes. Ron Coleman is the one in the middle of the zone. There's your one-on-one. -on -one. Takes Torre. Oh. Nice fake! Oh. Coleman can't get the back end of it. That was Metal Arc Lemon. What a ball fake. Boy, it's a shame he didn't make that one. Crowd would have gone nuts. A little hot sauce and one mixtape. Tough matchup, Mallers and Gross. Morgan, good movement, four to shoot. Morgan, no. Coleman has the rebound. Do it all for the Cardinals. That's six boards and three assists to go along with a team high 17 points. All those points in the paint. Eastern not able to finish in the last couple minutes. Some turnovers. Ball State has now hit 10 threes. Mallers making 11. 
Timeout again. Rob Murphy trying to swell an 18-3 Ball State run. College basketball on ESPN is presented in part by Hazen Sons. We do restoration right. And by Mutual Bank. Go ahead, live a better life. Downtown Muncie, Indiana, where the Ball State Cardinals host the Eastern Michigan Eagles today. Boy, this thing turns on its head. Eastern Michigan has led by as many as 12. Ball State now up by four. David Ehad, Jaron Coleman needed to be a straw, uh, a straw to stir the drink, and he has stirred and stirred again as we've come down the backstretch. Yes, yeah, 17 points, Joel, six rebounds, and he's making all the big plays and doing it with flair. And how about the freshman backcourt between Coleman and Bumbleo here in the second half, and the defense is stiffened. Eastern just one for their last six. Ball State whistled for a foul off the ball. Trying to stymie the off-ball movement, Luke Bumbleo hit with his first. And again, that is totally fine. That is only the fourth team foul. Be ultra aggressive. It's four fouls on both sides here in the second half. The whistle did quiet the crowd. Trying to isolate Torre. Guarded by Tajay Teague. Good pump fake. And to the free throw line, he'll get two shots. That putback will not count. And if you're Ball State, that is the right play. You hate to see Teague pick up fouls. He's not in any danger, but make Torre earn those at the foul line. He airballed the last. And now for Eastern Michigan, if you want to finish the game on the road, we talked about it, keys at the outset. This is one of them. Bubakar Torre is a 44% free throw shooter. Added incentive that the students in attendance get free tater tots if he misses here. Consecutive free throws by an opponent missed. Free food and the lead stays four. As if Bubakar Torre needed any additional pressure. You see Teague working at that pocket. There Coleman. it is. Little floater. Coleman knew it was going. 19 for Jerron Coleman. Ball State pedal to the metal and unrelenting here in the second half. And they're not settling. They're getting the ball inside and it's paying dividends. Benelli, that's a three. And Benelli with a big answer. 
and another timeout. That's the third three of the second half for Thomas Benelli. And it makes it a one possession game again. Just one timeout remaining for Eastern Michigan. Big time shot by Benelli. Boy, they needed that. Cardinal starting to pull away. But Jerron Coleman stealing the show. 19 points for the freshman point guard. And he's done it all over. Knocking down threes early on. Little step back in the corner. And the alley oop jam. There's the athleticism. And work in the middle of that paint. That time going over the seven footer. Double figures now in eight of the last nine games. Coleman averaging 12 points per game over that stretch. The easy front runner for Mid-American Conference Freshman of the Year. He would be the third of those in Muncie under James Whitford's tenure following Xavier Turner and Sean Sellers, who's a grad assistant on the Cardinals team now. And think about this, Bumbleo with 14, the freshmen combined for 33 of the Cardinals 58 today. On a day where Tajay Teague and Ishmael El Amin, the top two scorers, have been silent. Teague lurking down there on the block. Bumbleo again, Bumbleo, give him five threes! The man's gonna own Muncie by the time the ball game's over. Eastern Michigan, no answer. Ball State is seven of its last eight from the floor after having trailed by 12 here in the second half. And they are eight of 11 from deep in the second half. It's 12 made threes in the game total. Make it 13. Oh! Make it 13! <laughs> That's what the backboard's there for. The bank open on a Saturday for El Amin. Benelli moving three, missed it. Inside a minute, and Eastern Michigan has to foul. No one takes and no one makes more threes in the Mid-American Conference than the Ball State Cardinals. And the shooting from behind the arc has spurred a 26 to six run. Now here's the thing, we mentioned there weren't a lot of fouls. Eastern's got a foul it way, its way to the free throw line here. 49 seconds to go. They still have one to give. They're gonna play it out. Bold strategy. Well, that's very surprising. I mean, if you didn't get a steal right away, essentially what you've done right now, you've just conceded the game. So Ball State will win. It picks up its eighth victory in Mid-American Conference play. It sweeps the season series with Eastern Michigan. And after a helpless, hapless first half, Ball State rocking and almost rolling. Here to finish off the second. Cardinals have outscored Eastern Michigan 42 to 22 here in the second half. Air ball caught by El Amin. This thing is done. Turn out the lights. That's a big time comeback for the boys in gray. And the freshman, Joel, we cannot say enough. Jerron Coleman, 19 points, seven rebounds. Bumbleo with 17 points. Let's talk about stepping up big. The youth did that today in the second half. I don't know what James Whitford said at halftime, but it worked. That is for darn sure. James Whitford is with Samantha Johnson. Coach Luke Bumbleo and Jerron Coleman coming up alive in that second half. What makes them be able to swing the energy in those last few minutes? Well, we needed them, obviously. You know, I thought it was they did a great job, and we our whole team. You know, we really showed a lot of composure. First half didn't go well, and uh, really proud of our team. Back in the win column, what does this do for your men moving forward? Oh, it's a big confidence boost. We needed it. Our guys are trying, and I'm, we're we're fighting. 
and uh, we needed a break, and we got one today. Coach, thank you. Congratulations. Thank you, Sam. Congratulations to James Whitford, his team. Just dominant in the second half and route to a 64-55 victory over the Eastern Michigan Eagles. For David Eha, Samantha Johnson, the rest of our crew, my name is Joel Gadet. This game is streaming on ESPN and watch ESPN and archived on the ESPN app. Ball State, a winner by nine. And she said yes. Good night for Muncie.